Hey Triple Fivers, Andrew here. I hope you are having a wonderful summer. I sure am. I am coming to you from a very unusual location as far as the channel is concerned. This is the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I am here for my real life job. As you know, my YouTube channel is just a hobby. I'm doing graduate research in leadership for school administration, which is of course my career, my line of work. So in this video, I'm gonna give my review of the original Wayfarers by Ray-Ban. Uh, of course, there are many great videos on these sunglasses already out there. Uh, talking about the history, how to identify fakes. Uh, what I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, well maybe touching on some of that, is mostly what drew me to this model uh, and what has met my expectations and what has let me down. We're going to just walk into the main courtyard of St. Thomas, beautiful statue of the great medieval thinker Thomas Aquinas. Uh, and uh, that's what the University of St. Thomas is named after. Um, we're just going to find a nice quiet spot where I can show you these shades in more detail. All right, here's a nice quiet spot where I can show you these Wayfarers in closer detail. As you can see, I went for just the standard model with uh, the tortoise shell uh, with the green uh, non-gradient lenses, non-polarized. Um, I thought about getting the polarized lenses, uh, but I wasn't sure how much I would like this model, uh, so I didn't necessarily want to pay that extra amount. Uh, but if I do end up liking these, uh, over time I will probably get a polarized pair as well. So let's just take a walk around these glasses real quick. Um, as you can see, uh, you're looking at a very highly polished pair of frames here. Uh, you've got a uh, very uh, clean Ray-Ban branding all um, throughout. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail, and that is generally what separates um, authentic Ray-Bans from the fake ones, is just the level of finishing, uh, because there are very nice fakes out there. Um, the best way to ensure that you don't have fakes is just by buying them from an authorized dealer and that of course isn't anything special you can get them at Target um, but uh, things to look for uh, especially are uh, just the uh, quality of fit and finish uh, the etching on the inside of the lens on the left hand side uh, the correct angle uh, or tilt of the frame that is a a signature feature of Ray-Bans is that they uh, had that original tilt uh, back in 56 when they were introduced. That was uh, one of the uh, distinguishing marks of Ray-Bans and that has changed over the years. Um, but of course the uh, perennial appeal of Wayfarers is that they are a very versatile set of shades. Um, although they obviously uh, have a sort of 1950s um, uh, style that they are um, no doubt uh, known for. Uh, they are very versatile and um, that is I think part of their perennial appeal. So what was I looking for when uh, I decided to get a pair of Wayfarers? Well I wanted uh, something that had uh, a very high quality sturdy frame. Uh, I wanted something that would work in a versatile number of outfits, uh, kind of formal or informal. I think the last sunglasses I reviewed on this channel were a number of years ago. Uh, they were American Optical Original Pilots, uh, which are glasses that are issued uh, in the Air Force. And they are very excellent shades, but one of the things that uh, always happened with my uh, Original Pilots is I would uh, break uh, the nose piece. And so one of the things that I was looking for with these glasses is just a one-piece frame so that there was less of a likelihood of parts breaking. What you can see I've got now is a pair of uh, Wayfarers and then just the generic sunglasses, which I've been wearing a lot of the last year. These are pugs that you can just get at a local gas station. And I have them here to show you uh, the main difference in the kind of quality you can get in a plastic frame. I really like these pugs as far as the style goes. I think they fit my face very well. The problem is, is that they're just pretty much straight up plastic and very thin. 
and uh, I've broken uh, almost all of these and I've probably bought six or seven pairs. Uh, they often crack up here or down here um, and uh, sometimes uh, they've even cracked uh, in the um, uh, <laughs> parts of the frame that you wouldn't expect. Um, which is one of the reasons why the Ray-Ban Wayfarers appealed to me is this is really quite a thick uh, set of shades. I don't have the weight right in front of me, but maybe someone who knows can comment down below or I'll add it to the description. These are fairly sturdy, and I, and I have already dropped these, unfortunately, uh, and they seem to have taken it pretty well. So that's one of the things that I think is appealing about these is that they're uh, relatively durable for being uh, plastic frames, and of course I know that the uh, hardcore Ray-Ban guys are going to say, well, they're not strictly speaking plastic, they're acete or however you say it. Uh, please don't murder me in the comments. Now uh, the point is they're not metal frames, uh, even though they have some nice reinforcement uh, as uh, you saw when I showed you around the uh, frames uh, a couple of scenes ago. Um, and so far, uh, yeah, I do think that these are definitely more durable than uh, your typical Wayfarer clones that you might get at a gas station. One of the things I like about these frames is how they feel when you're not wearing them. They have a little bit of heft and they can easily go like say on the top of your head and uh, they stay put. They have a nice amount of weight without being super heavy and uh, not having any uh, uh, proper uh, like nose pieces, they're not going to get tangled in your hair at all. And the last thing we should probably just talk about is the price. Uh, these will retail somewhere between 150 to 175 bucks. You'll pay more for the polarized frame. I think at that full retail price, uh, you're getting something pretty simple. I think that the way to find a proper pair of uh, Ray-Bans is honestly to shop sales because they are so mass produced. But if you do shop sales properly, and uh, websites like Gear Patrol do a great job of letting uh, their followers know when, like say, Nordstrom Rack, for example, is having a sale on Ray-Bans, then you can easily get these uh, well under the 150-ish dollar price point that you'll pay if you, like say, just walk into a Target. Uh, and so I think that these are a, actually a very nice value at say. The other objection to consider with Wayfarers, and I do think it's a significant one, is what I kind of consider the Casey Neistat objection, which is that uh, they are very heavily branded with the Ray-Bans on both sides and on the lens. And uh, if you're not into logos, then it is uh, a little tacky, I guess. Now, I'm not going to attack this uh, with um, a paint scraper or uh, some kind of uh, knife to get all the branding out the way Casey does. Uh, but you just sort of have to be willing to live with that branding if you want uh, your Wayfarers to uh, look original, which is what I'm going for. All told, I really am enjoying these glasses. I don't think they're the best value out there for sunglasses compared to, say, um, American Optical Original Pilots, or sometimes even the good value you can get out of a pair of cheap sunglasses, say from the gas station. But I do think that they are an iconic model, very well made, very nicely finished, and there are some things that I am really enjoying about these glasses so far. Guys, I'd love to hear below what kind of sunglasses you are wearing these days. Uh, are you into some of the old school Ray-Bans or are you into something more, um, uh, I guess, modern? There's an awful lot of boutique sunglasses out there now, isn't there? Uh, let me know in the comments below what sunglasses are your sunglasses this summer and I will be happy to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching.